Tutorial number two has a little discrepancy with the uh, the wireframe back to the uh, to the part. If uh, you want to include the uh, the chamfers, um, we'll call those. Let's see, what do we have? Uh, quarter inch. So um, probably three sixteenths, maybe an eighth of an inch. If you want to include those, otherwise um, not not necessary. We can go with the uh, the drawing. Always update it later. Or we walk over to the belt sander and we put four chamfers on it and move on. Um, looking at the uh, the part, it's called out for the uh, 25 thousandths by 45 degrees on the uh, the top edge. So we're going to run a contour with a chamfer um, setting that would be either a countersink or we'll set up a, um, uh, a mill drill, drill mill, whichever way you want to define it. Basically the end mill with a 90 degree point ground on the end of it capable of doing the uh, the chamfer. Uh, looking at the sizing, 0.75, we've been doing a, um, uh, a lot of our parts with uh, oversized material. Uh, we can stay with that. I don't really have, uh, have much in the way of a fixture to, um, uh, to do this part any better. So one inch material, uh, if we go with the, uh, the saw cut, 2.5 by 2.5, a little bit oversized. Or with uh, stock material, maybe 10 thousandths, uh, 10 to 15 thousandths oversize. And then we would saw cut a little bit more on the length. All right, so until I have um, stock or I've set the, uh, the order for the, uh, the stock material, uh, I'm going to go with, uh, again, the assumption that the origin will be on the, um, on the corner of the part. So they've drawn uh, from, the, uh, from the center point. Uh, I could go either way with um, with the sketch um, based on the centers. Yeah, I think um, think that'll work, and then we'll just move it back to the origin. Uh, let's see, the bore is through. We have the steps to the outside, and then we'll look at um, uh, a couple of strategies for setting up our our tool library. All right, so before we get into the machine or get into the the drawing let's uh, take a quick look and may need the machine up first so uh, let's go ahead and jump back to the wireframe all right so getting our sizing we'll go with the uh, the rectangle anchor to center and we're two and a half by two and a half okay so when it comes out to position place it Blue's not really that um, that visible, but once we accept, it'll go over. Circle center point, we have a diameter of two inches, and then center point. And what was the wall thickness? Two inches was the um, the outside. Mm. Oh, one and a half. I'm looking at the linear distance on the uh, on the bottom. So I was looking for the um, diameter symbol, but they pulled it up as linear. All right, so we'll go ahead and uh, apply and accept. 1.5. Go to position and accept. Oh, I guess we could have stayed in the circle. It's not called out as a tap, so diameter 0.25. All right, we go with the uh, the center point. We have um, one inch and one inch, so one point, comma, one point. And I think the uh, putting the, the decimal in is probably have it. I don't need the trailing zeros, but I do like to have the, uh, the decimal place uh, pretty much from the uh, working on the controls where one by itself is 0 .0001. And then um, let's see, OK and create new. And we'll pick the same size. Clicking out into the work area, so one comma minus one. All right, so I'm leaning towards the mirroring is, uh, is probably a little bit easier. But if we want to put in the values, 
and then minus one, minus one, and then last will be minus one and positive one. Oh, and I didn't give it a value, so it's asking me to drag. So the 0.25, go ahead and accept. All right, so as far as the uh, the chamfer geometry, it's telling me the 0.025 by 45 degrees. I'm not really going to draw those those lines in or offset. In the wireframe, you can kind of see it, but um, anything that confuses the issue, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave out until I'm sure I need it. All right. So I do want this to be at uh, the origin. So transform, we will move to origin. Whatever point that you pick jumps to the origin. And then we'll uh, zoom up on it a little bit. <clears throat> All right, and then uh, on the machine, we'll set up for the, uh, for the mill and I'll pick the uh, Baja's control. All right, so once we have a machine pick, then we can look at the uh, the tool manager. All right, and under the tool manager, we have the uh, the default settings. But if I go to open up a different tool library, then we have the listings of well, those look like all of the holders. There's mill inch, mill millimeter, and actually. I haven't um, haven't looked at the cap 40, so let's um, see if that is just that was just holders. All right, so that was the the holder definitions. All right, so previous versions have had uh, a few more a uh, few more files, different size, large tools, small tools to uh, to choose from. So anything that I put up into the um, to the mix and the lower portion is the tool library. The upper portion is for the current file. We need to populate the current file so that we can go back and uh, create a, a stored library. And right, so they, they could make this more convoluted, but um, you know we have to, to kind of work within the fr framework that we're given. So I'm going to go through and pick my, my standard tools. All right, we're not. Um, I'm not really looking at um, uh, the same type of uh, a strategy. Um, I could make a, um, uh, for instance, I could make a um, uh, a tool crib for running steel or harder materials, full of four fluid end mills and um, different drills. Um, uh, or we go for the aluminum two and three flute and set for for those geometries. So filtering out none, we're going to set for the end mill and accept. And filter is active. And so first tool will be a half inch flat end mill. And I'll add it to the, uh, to the mix. Shows up as tool 290, that's fine. Uh, we'll go down to a 3 8 and add it, quarter inch, 3 16 eighth inch and those are my standard I would um, I would say I would use those uh, pretty often back into the filter none and then let's uh, go with the uh, the chamfer mill see what's available anyway uh, quarter inch by 45 degree half angle so included angle so that would be able to spot and do those those chamfers that we were um, uh, just looking at Last would be maybe a face mill, um, so pretty good size, uh, probably bigger than um, we'll go with, but um, we'll look at the uh, the definition. So yeah, three inch, and that gives me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tools. All right, to go into my my library. Um, editing each one of those. So pulling that out, let's see, cutting length and half inch, standard length, one and a quarter. And then the properties, tool, length, tool number one, because I'm intending that when I bring this in, they will stay in the order that they're loaded in the tool grip. 
and the side mount tool changer and they will pretty much live there. Uh, feed per tooth, yeah, thou and a half uh, surface feet per minute. Uh, if we're going to set for carbide, let's uh, stay at that um, 800 range, knowing that we may have to go higher or slower. Uh, plunge rate, and let's see, click to recalculate. Let's see, we had 800. Let's see, feed per tooth, spindle speed, and we'll set for carbide. All right, so name, half inch, flat end mill, description, roughing tools. All right, so tool one. Uh, for ours, we're going to use all these. So rather than go through each one of these and, and change it, let's see, two, tool two, three, four, five, and then the quarter inch chamfer would be tool six. Uh, cutting length is a little bit longer, but that's okay. And we'll go with tool six. And surface feet per minute, not quite as high. Um, still a carbide tool, but giving us a, um, a starting point. All right. So with, uh, with that in mind, we're going to create a new tool library. And um, let's see. Um, Pause aluminum. All right, for instance, go ahead and save it. That gives me the new items. I can shift select, send everything. Well, I thought I could send everything down. Let's see, can I drag everything down? All right, so similar tool, add another. No, just go ahead and override it. Okay, maybe I don't want that one. <laughs> Try to lead on the keyboard. Yes. All right. So one in six would go through and change the uh, the rest. We'll try that again. Still not letting me do all of them. All right. Well, if we have to go one by one, and we're not even going one by one. Okay. Come on. Let me have it. Oh, filters. Okay, now that I've added 20 because the filter was on, let's try again. All right, one more time. So, do what I want, not what I told you to. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go back and, uh, and save. And let's see, it should ask me. Save changes to your current library when we get out of it. All right, so using that tool library under the uh, the files, Haas Aluminum picks up for the tool library and is now set with that folder. If we go back in and set that as the default tool library, then each time I lo load up that machine, it will load that, that tool library. All right, so... That got me my geometry, or got me a start anyway. I still have to go and fine-tune my, my tool library. Uh, but without going through the, um, you know, the entire, entire process, I have the two or three tools that I need uh, to, get us, uh, to get us started. All right, so into the files. And the tool settings. Still would like to set these as the defaults. Ah, after we restarted, my uh, sequence number went to one and one. So going back into the machine definition and the control uh, did at least that much, even though we couldn't find the operation defaults. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to go ahead and select for material and accept. Stock setup. Now we'll go ahead and turn on the display and we'll pick four corners and go opposite corners. And our thickness was uh, 0.75, but we're telling it that the stock is one inch. So I want to see that stock. All right, so we got through the uh, the settings. Some point we'll need to save this. And this was tutorial four.
Uh, might have been saving for the assignments. Well, we'll pick that out later. All right, so for the uh, for the geometry, then we still need a drill uh, in our tool library. We still um, let's see, we're going to have to decide what to do with the uh, the outside there, and probably should have um, updated for the um, the face mill. So we're two and a half. I have a three inch face mill. This would be a good um, a good chance to just go ahead and make it in one pass instead of running back and forth. So mill tool pass, and go ahead and set up for the facing. Keep it at tutorial four. Um, okay to use define stock, and we'll go ahead and hit okay. Tool path type was facing, and the tool we'll need to select from our select uh, from our list. Notice that since the tool library came in, if all of these numbers were populated correctly, we would have our, our list as was selected in the tool crib. The order is not important. It's where it's at in the station, and I'm not going to be loading and unloading these tools as much. So once they're, once they're in, they're touched off um, and ready to go, I can select from, from this group. So the main thing here would be to get to tool eight something like that all right so have that face operation i didn't go through um, spindle so a thousand surface feet i didn't really look at the insert if it's a fly cutter then it's only one insert three inch would probably have four maybe uh maybe six inserts so we'll slow it down just a little bit and adjust four thousandths per tooth is a little bit quick so we'll stay at the thou and a half all right six inches thousand rpm going across aluminum depends on the insert geometry but that would be a good place to start even though that seems kind of slow i want a nice finish out of it and going faster does not necessarily um, does not necessarily help the finish, especially if there's tearing or um, uh, redepositing the um, the chips onto the uh, onto the face. All right. So once I run this face mill and I have actual values, I'll come back and build those into my library. Cut parameters one way should make one pass. Um, so the overlaps and everything that should still work. No depths of cut linking parameters uh, we're probably only taking ten thousandths at most if we decide to use this on the back side though and we have a quarter inch of engagement a quarter inch of uh, of cut that's going to be a pretty heavy cut all right so um, in that case i want my retract to be a little bit higher so we'll go back up to the one inch and whatever the material is I want that feed plane to be above above the material. So if I have a calculated quarter inch, 300,000, so it's not coming down, plunging onto the material, the, the, the oversized stock. Top of the stock, zero, depth, zero. And the other thing would be checking out for the, uh, for the coolant. And right now everything's off. We set that up for the, um, the TM, and it's trying to go up and back. All right, so we'll look at the parameters. Uh, one way, um, there was no stock to leave on the floor, so I missed that one. And max step over distance. Let's see if it'll go to um, to 100% on that one. All right, so the two and a half should go to three. So 25%. That was the extension, the along. No, nope, 3.3 approach. Let's see if we uh, reduce the across. Mm -hmm. At least 50%. Okay, thought I had a handle on those. Apparently not. 
So 50% of the tool, no, 50%. Have to read that again. Oh, or you just pick one pass. That was what I was looking for. All right, so direction. All right, so we'll turn off the display. Uh, going around the outside, well, you know, I said that if I have 10 or 15 thousandths on the, um, the outside of the material, and then we're maybe cut a hundred thousandths long, um, so fifty thousandths on each side to remove. The question is, do I want to step around the whole material, or do I go ahead and start removing the material on the outside? And so, if I go with the um, uh, the boss, all right. So removing the uh, the material for the boss down to half an inch, then. Um, uh, that will remove most of the material. The last will be quarter inch plus a little bit. All right, so that's going to be a contour. Um, the issue with making this open, unless I have a really small tool to get in and out of all of those nooks and you know, kind of the nooks and crannies that's going to generate, there's not much advantage. And if I can run fast enough, the air milling out on the outside uh, won't won't be uh, really won't be that much. All right, so I'm gonna check the chain geometry. Arrow is into the uh, is in the interior. So at this point, it would be climb. So let's go ahead and reverse the uh, the chain. So that would make it climb to the outside. But let's change side. Oh, I got out of it too fast. All right, so in mill on the outside of the part, climb cutting around uh, the exterior of the part. So visually that makes sense. Have the half inch um, flat tool. It's coming up with most of my numbers. Actually would say that one's a little bit slow. That one's, I uh, don't really like all the decimal places. Uh, we'll go ahead and wrap it and give it the, um, the boss OD. And cut parameters. Let's see, we're telling it to go uh, 0.75, so um, if we go with a depth of diameter, um, depth to diameter ratio of about, um, about half, that would be quarter inch uh, deep for end mill, 0.33 about the, uh, the max. If I pushed it to 0.375, I could take it in two passes, all right, but I'm approaching that um, th um, three quarters or point, uh, let's see, three quarters depth to diameter as opposed to 0.5. So 0.5 is, uh, or the half is going to be much gentler. Um, the three quarters um, is going to be uh, quite a bit more aggressive. All right, so I'll stay in computer. Um, this is going to be the, uh, the roughing pass, so stock to leave on the walls. Uh, we'll leave about ten thousandths for coming back and cleaning up. Um, depth cuts, we said we're going to take three quarters of the diameter, so 0.375. And not worried about finish, we can keep the tool down, which will, in most cases, um, from the lead in to the lead out, not do a full retract. Uh, we do want... Um, quite a bit, but probably not that much. So let's go to the radius, 0.25, and the arc of 0.25, and see what that looks like on the, uh, the preview. Uh, maybe drop that down to 45, and transfer it all over to the other side. So since we're coming in on that cylinder, it doesn't really matter um, start, and, start and finish, wherever it picks up, um, enter exit at midpoint. Most of the time, the midpoint, I want to say, will be over at 180 degrees. Uh, zero degrees is usually the start point. No breakthrough. Uh, multi passes down. And let's see, multi passes would be steps in. We'll probably need two steps in. All right, that full width is not going to clean up. Half inch tool is going to leave an island out here, so we're going to have to at least knock that corner off. 
So two passes and we'll see what quarter inch spacing looks like. So radius of the tool and keep tool down again. No tabs, the linking parameters. Uh, let's see, we faced off the top. We'll stay with the absolutes and minus 0.75. Nope, minus 0.5. All right, so since I wasn't going to depth, I completely miscalculated. So depth cuts could be 0.25. So staying at 50% depth to, uh, to diameter ratio. Except. All right. So the rapid or the feed in out here makes the pass around, feeds to the next level, tool stays down, feeds out goes to the next uh, lower level, feeds around, and then the rapid is out. So I may only be saving a little bit, not rapiding, jumping over to the next level, um, but it is, it is gonna be, um, be enough, um, uh, basically not a wasted, not wasted moves. All right, so that should clean up the, uh, the corner. We'll have to double check in the, uh, the simulation. Since I wasn't going so deep on the uh, the depth, um, I should be able to open that up and maybe take a little more radial engagement since I'm not taking so much axial engagement. All right, so let's uh, make sure to save that. And then I want to copy as opposed to reproducing the whole operation. We'll go back in and paste. All right, so depth cut gets turned off. Lead in, lead out was all okay. Multi passes gets turned off. What else did we have on uh, where? And no, um, no stock to leave. So main advantage here is that I don't have to reproduce the chain. I don't have to go through the selection process again. And even though I have to uncheck, the parameters are all set up for that geometry. Um, so copying is just a little bit more, more efficient than starting fresh. All right, so gonna hide the, um, or turn off the display on the previous, regenerate, and take a look at the, um, the depth and the clearance. So that gets us into the um, into the geometry. Let's see. Since we're still on the outside, uh, let's go ahead with the um, the contour for the um, uh, for the uh, the lower step. So once again, if I want to keep my basic parameters, keep that geometry. I'm going to copy the finish pass this time, paste it one more time, look at the parameters, and then instead of keeping the circular boss, I'm going to switch it over to the, the round. So that chain gets deleted, and we go back in and add a new chain, picks up the, uh, the geometry, and we go ahead and accept. Arrows to the outside pointed in the right direction. Cut parameters, set up for wear, no stock to leave. Um, depth cuts, none. Lead in, instead of having it start at the midpoint and go with the arcs because this is square, I'm gonna go back over to the adjust end of, end of contour. And we're just going to extend it by uh, 60%. And then copy it all over to the end of contour. Breakthrough, no multi-passes, no tabs, linking parameters. And I want to go probably at least um, 10 thousandths beyond the other uh, part so that it's um, uh, when we when we take the uh, the facing pass on the backside, it's removing uh, material instead of leaving just a little bit of a, of a, uh, a burr or the razor blade there. All right, so we'll see what that looks like. And regenerate. All right, so probably need to extend that out just a little bit more, but it does give me enough clearance to uh, to get it started. All 
All right, so again, these numbers, even the uh, to a certain extent, the feeds and speeds are all subject to change as we get out to the control and we observe what's um, what the actual cutting conditions are at the machine. We're giving it our best guess to start, and once once we're actually making parts, then we can adjust. All right, so we've got the uh, the first step. We run around the outside. We'll go into the um, into the bore as a pocket um, to uh, to make sure that all gets opened up. And same thing, we'll need to go at least ten thousandths past to uh, to make sure that it cleans up. So new operation gets mill toolpaths pocket. We'll pick up the uh, the chain. Pockets are naturally interior. It's not going to look for a direction. It's going to look for the enclosed or the um, space. So let's go with the uh, the half inch. And like I said, I'm notoriously bad at putting in comments. So uh, the previous the previous uh, two I need to put in for the uh, the steps or at least give it a little bit of description. Uh, cut parameters, standard pocket type, we'll leave ten thousandths on the wall, nothing on the floor. Uh, the roughing passes, well, let's go with the, well, true spiral will generate a lot of, um, uh, a lot of code, but uh, we should be able to keep the, um, the loading very consistent throughout the entire toolpath. Step over percentage of 50% and 25% um, or, or uh, 0.25 inches, quarter of an inch, is going to be each of the uh, the arms of the spiral. All right, so um, that'll that'll stay engaged, and we'll go with the uh, the helix uh, again, increasing the uh, the plunge angle 10%. Clearance to the walls, wherever uh, wherever that lands, and minimum quarter inch. I'm gonna drop those just a little bit. All right. Finishing pass, uh, outer boundary, start finish at closest. That shouldn't um, really come in. We'll turn on the uh, the wear compensation uh, for three quarters of an inch for a one and a quarter inch length of cut in mill. Um, yeah, we'll go ahead and let it do one spring pass. So as it comes in, um, that'll take any of the taper that we we injected in uh, pocketing. That'll take it out of the uh, the part. All right, depth cuts. So we're going to stay, let's see, quarter inch. We'd like to do that in the uh, the two passes, but I think the interior being able to eject the chip, getting um, uh, everything to uh, to clear out, is going to be a little um, a little aggressive. So three passes at 0.25 with the um, the consistent loading, and then stepping to the uh, to the next level. And we're going to end up with a fourth pass if I don't make it a little bit deeper. Actually, we'll just go 0.26. And because I'm telling it 0.76, um, to have that, that cleanup on the backside, I uh, want to make sure that the addition of um, three quarter inch passes does not end up less than this this number. So as long as it's greater, it'll go ahead and, um, and finish the cut in three passes. All right, so now I get to go back and check um, since I put in a positive number. Go minus 0.76 and regenerate the dirty tool, dirty tool path. All right, so the next question based on the uh, the view is, are we finishing on the last? All right, so machine finish passes only at final depth. All right, so that little bit of a jump is telling me that it finishes the spiral. 
and then it's coming around to finish the uh, the bore. Then it goes to the next spiral. Now on this one, we only see the um, see the one. Uh, let's see where is it. We're only going to see the one double at the very bottom. All right, and that includes the um, includes the finish. All right, so if we wanted to uh, to spot, well, we'll go into the uh, to the drill, pick the uh, the center points. Right. And because wrapping from point to point uh, would basically be wrapping through the uh, through the boss, I want to make sure that this retracts, not not keep the um, the tool down. All right. So we're going to add a library tool, and we'll set the filter. Yeah. All right. So filter. Picking up for drills, and that um, since that um, new library did not have, I did not select for any drills. I'm gonna have to switch back over to the mill inch, and we said that was quarter inch, so quarter inch drill. Go ahead and accept. It put it as um, as tool tool two. If these were in the right sequence, it would have seen the next available tool as tool nine. Since I didn't go through the entire process, I get to change it. All right, so I'm gonna have to go back and clean up my tool library to get these to come in in the right order. Uh, let's see, surface feet per minute, we'll go to 200. And my cap locks are still on. So 30, 56, um, go up a little bit. And don't really need three decimal places, so we'll go with, um, with those. Cut parameters, we're going to be in a uh, peck drill. 100 thousandths is a little on the, um, on the aggressive side without so we'll drop it down to 50 thousandths. And then um, let's see, top of stock. Let's go absolute for the uh, for the retract. Top of stock is minus 0.5. And the depth. Now let's see if we can get away with uh, the final minus 0.75. Doesn't your retract need to be greater to step over the box? No, we're going to find out. Okay. The retracted absolute should be 100 thousandths above, um, above Z0. Oh, okay. And top of stock, I'm shifting down. But I always verify because I, I typically will be setting an absolute, but the incremental tells it that I can wrap it to that minus 0.5, to that, um, that clearance. But I may need to activate the clearance plane and make the retract plane a hundred thousandths above above this. So I'm looking for the right combination. Okay, why why are you moving the top of the stock? To um, to come down to the uh, to the step. All right, I want I don't want it to peck for uh, fifty thousandths at a time, ten pecks to okay. get to that first ledge. Okay. I want it to rapid, preferably a hundred thousandths above that, make two pecks. And then engage in the um, the material that's okay. there. So again, I have to work through this logic, and um, when uh, let's go into the tip comp, ten thousandths breakthrough amount, and we'll see if that um, that did what it was supposed to. All right, so I don't see a rapid. I am at the top of the stock, which is okay. But like we were saying is I may need to turn the clearance on absolute 0.1, make the retract 0.1. All right, so 
in, in theory, 0.1 above the top of the part to, to clear for the, uh, the movements. Um, use clearance only at start and end of operation would pretty much keep the tool down, but that would rapid through the boss. We get it up and, and over, then it should rapid to minus 0.4. Top of stock sees at minus 0.5, and the, uh, the drill to depth is minus 0.75, or we would go minus 0.25 in incremental. But I would rather see an absolute number there. All right, if it works out. All right, closer. Probably have a little bit more without the wireframe there and the being able to look at the side. I am seeing it rapid some distance and then pick up the pack to peck through the part. All right, so basically it's these yellow lines that I'm looking for as instead of this being blue all the way down, meaning that it's going to peck that whole distance, it's going to rapid to that level, start the peck, and go through the part. All right, so I'm looking for the combination of absolute and clearance to, to make that happen. All right, and... If um, you know we were uh, doing this on a regular basis, I would have a, um, a set direction, or I would make a cheat sheet that basically said, if you want this, check this, check this, check, check this. All right, so somewhere along the line, we're going to hit the save. Right. Yes. Is it possible in the case here where you have this, this um, Tower, as it were, mm -hmm. and you're working your way down to a, um, a flange. Rather than doing a clearance vertical coming up, couldn't you just? Is there a way to just you know go shift, go over to the side and the next one? Yeah, that was the um, uh, that was the other other setting on that clearance. Is that if we tell it use clearance only at start and end of operation, it will stay at that level. You will be rapiding sub sub Z zero in the negative, um, negative direction. The problem with this one is that the holes are so close that the rapid would be through the, through the boss, through right, the tower. I mean, you, you know, do a, tell it to, a negative y and tell it to go around? No, yeah. not, not easily. Okay. Um, the rapid, kind of a... no, the rapid, it, when in doubt, full retract. Mm -hmm. Get it clear of the part, do everything above the part, go back in. Um, safest, you're going to save a lot of tools, you know, not, um, and the drill especially, there's not any mechanism to say step off, you know, come up a hundred thousandths above that ledge, step off, come around, just way more complicated than it's worth. Yeah. All right, I'm having too much fun rotating. All right, so going into the, um, the, uh, the chamfer operation, mill tool pass. It's still going to be a contour. Oh, um, and oops, I got ahead of myself. So I wanted to keep, we'll go back into the chain geometry and we'll add chain. So there's the, uh, the first one and adding chain two will be the, uh, the interior. We'll go ahead and select. All right. So chain one, can um, change um, change side. And didn't think both of them were selected. Okay. Okay. Chain two. No, do and do it. Both of them duplicates. I'm going to say those should operate independent. How about reverse? Ah, okay, so we can reverse one and then change the side. Okay. As long as I see those arrows pointing the right way, I don't care how we get there. All right, so go ahead and accept. Tool is going to be the, uh, the quarter inch chamfer tool. We already set um, set some of the numbers. Um, yeah, I don't think those came over. I was going to make that run a little bit slower. We had 400 set for the surface beam. Mm. 
Okay, well, I'm by the 6,000, not sure about the surface heat per minute. And being a chamfer mill, it kind of depends on what we tell it for the contact. So um, let's go ahead and put the chamfer notation. On the cut parameters, uh, we can adjust the chamfer two ways. One is in the control um, by, by setting a wear factor or a, a, Z, a Z wear, telling it to go deeper. Uh, or we can use compensation, negative value, and the diameter compensation. We're going to tell it that this is a 2D chamfer. Uh, we have the width of the chamfer was um, 0.025. And the tip offset is, well, 0.1 seems a little bit um, big for a, um, a quarter inch end mill. So let's go with uh, 0.03. And see what that does for the um, for the setup. No stock to leave, no no corners. So pretty much this requires that we verify also. And right, we're going to look at um, what's generated and probably make an adjustment at the control. Uh, we'll turn off the um, end contours so it carried those over. Go back to the entry and the exit. Eighth inch, eighth inch, 45 degree. That all looks okay. So it adjusted the 50% for the diameter of the tool. Uh, linking parameters, well, definitely not um, minus 0.76. So quarter inch, 0.25. I haven't been setting that number back up, but typically that would be, say, one inch as a retract if we needed the, um, the extra clearance. And depth. See if it pulls that up. Well, we can't um, can't post the code, so let's go ahead and be minimum possible. All right. So I see the the depths, and one of the reasons I wanted to go back to let's see three. All right. So from that point up to the edge. That's not quite a 45 degree angle, but I would rather have the uh, the chamfer tool be a little bit high and walk it in, walk it down until it um, buzzes that edge with uh, the 0.025. When I see the code and I see where it's uh, actually generating that tool path, then I'll be able to go through and make um, a little better decision on its um, on the depth combination. Mm. Yeah, not too bad. All right, so we'll go ahead and save that and call that good. So machining the um, the the backside off, we said we had a quarter inch material. I've been kind of uh, jumping around that. Really, we can do the um, the facing operation. Um, we can um, you know possibly put in another. Uh, uh, face with the uh, the quarter inch in, or the, the half inch in mill to run across and rough off the material and then come back with the facing to uh, to remove that material. Um, so that gives us a couple options. What I do want is another toolpath group. So the toolpath group is this all of these um, all of these toolpaths stay in toolpath group one. We can add another machine group and if we need it which would allow us to do both lathe and mill or EDM and mill or different combinations of machines because we would have separate properties, separate files, separate everything. All right, but in the groups, I just want a new toolpath group in that list. So I'm, I'm at the machine group. I want, to, I want to see whatever operations. When I post, I'll post for setup one out of this group. And set up two out of this group. What is set up two? Set up two is turning the part over and machining off the backside. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I don't really need to set up a a, a, a a unique work offset. If I needed a unique work offset, then I would be looking at actually flipping this over, setting a depth, uh, or setting a new. Um, Basically, a new um, a new plane on the backside 
uh, with a distinct work offset attached to it. And we need, I need a better example to, uh, to go through. We're going to be able to machine in the same orientation with pretty much the same zero, zero, right? And be able to face this because we're not picking up geometry or doing anything um, over, the, over the top on this particular part. I just need to remove the material and it will be in this same orientation. There's nothing on the side, nothing on this, this back side that I'm, I'm overly concerned with. So the tool path group allows me to separate these items out. All right. So let's go. I'm not going to, not going to copy. We're going to pull up the, uh, the facing operation and, um, okay to select the stock. And we'll stay with the, um, the tool, but I want to go with the, um, the half inch flat end mill. All right. So this will be like the, uh, the face rough. All right. Now, depending on the um, uh, how how aggressive, how how deep, what the tool geometry is on that facing mill, I may be able to take that whole quarter inch of material. That's going to be a, a fairly aggressive cut. Um, so let's go with um, I only went ten thousandths. So if I leave that for the for the material for the for the stock, I may still tear. Um, tear the um, little bit of material out um, that's left. All right, so we'll set up for both ways, zigzag. Um, let it do the overlap. Depth cuts will take the, uh, the full pass, max step over a quarter of an inch. It can handle that. No, well, I can either set it on the, um, on the, uh, the linking parameters or if we leave stock on the floor, I'll leave um, 15 thousandths to clean up. All right, because I know the three inch facing mill will take 15 to 20, 30, no problem. Still leave a decent finish. And then the linking parameters, one inch, 0.3 above the part, and absolute or incremental for the zero. So half inch tool is going to come in and take the majority, 200 and uh, whatever I told it, 230 thousandths, roughly. And do that in the multiple passes. Nope. All right, and then the, uh, the facing tool, same thing, okay. This tool will be back to the three inch face. Uh, we slowed that down a little bit for the other one, but we'll go through them. Cut parameters, one pass. No material to leave on the on the floor. And linking parameters gives it enough clearance. All right. So this group I can treat as display or not display. And then when I go check for toolpath group one, display, not display. Well, turn something on. Try that again. All right. And then for the uh, the simulation, what's selected, the items selected, because they're in organized in toolpath groups, I can go in and pick up the verify. And we'll look and see what's generated. See how deep those chamfers are. All right, so that's the, the one side. And go back and select. And this one shouldn't show as much because I didn't put any stock on the um, above, above zero. Feet across, feet across. All right, so the process would be that we're going to keep the same, um, same zero, zero. When we um, go to change to uh, to touch off these tools, we're going to be setting um, setting this part upside down on this on this ledge, and uh, holding it in the vise, whatever is enough enough to to clear the vise jaws. And then if we have to retouch off the the tools, we'll touch off on the extended stock. First pass would be to subtract some material, um, take a measurement, figure out what um, is actually going to bring us to this 0.750 dimension and then 
creep up on it so that we we take that finish pass right at 0.75. So if, when you post, it's going to generate two programs or it's going to generate one program with a stop so you can take the car out and turn it over and then touch off and do all kinds of No. Two programs. If, if we had two vices, yeah. if we had two vices, I could have this uh, this program in one vice, set a different uh, work coordinate, flip it over into the other vice, machine it off. Typically, we're going to accumulate however many parts we're going to accumulate and then do the second operation as a either on another machine or as as a, a, a second setup in the same machine. All right, so well, if, if you had two vices, it would be one program. Yeah, it could be. In which case, we would do the uh, the could post. Be or would be. It's up to you. It's your it's your choice. If you po um, tell it to post from the machine group, and everything is the same machine, all right. We haven't changed machine types. It will post all of this, but I haven't inserted anything to tell it to do a machine stop and change the part and and load. All right, so jumping back and forth isn't isn't set up yet. And if we want to put in a manual operation, then we need to um, mill toolpaths, um, come back over, where did it go? Manual entry. And text is undefined, and this is why you need the 206 um, GNM code, is we're going to type in... Um, let's see, we want to turn turn the spindle off. If there's any coolant, we want to turn the coolant off. G53 is E0. Need to make sure it's in rapid. And then G53 Y0 to present it to you. M00 to stop the machine. Okay, and when I accept that. Oh, yeah, and don't forget to um, turn me over. <laughs> I just want to put a disk above the M00 because sometimes you scroll it up top the screen. Wherever you prefer. We, when we can postcode and look at it, then we'll see where it, where it lines up. I mean, as it displays on the, the actual mill. And yes. Can, can you expand that? All right. So the mill is just just the parameters. We can go back. And since it changed, it even gets to regenerate the dirty operation. All right, so if we were to post from the machine group with everything checked, um, it would it would be able to see this. What we haven't done is told it that this is G54 work coordinates and that this is G55 work coordinates. So that would be the next step is making sure that I have that, that second coordinate system available. All right, since the T-plane, the WCS and the T-plane are the same, it's assuming that it's the same vice and that we're going to change. So that requires another step that I'm not quite ready to throw at you. But we would set up another, um, basically another um, uh, coordinate system, put it to G55, and assign it to these two operations. All right, so next time. <laughs>